Hey, my name's Gary. I am the director of the Rocky Mountain Ukulele Orchestra. I am also teaching ukulele every single day here on YouTube. Not every day. Every weekday on YouTube, I am running over to our website, Jolly Roger Ukulele, Jolly Roger Ukulele, to post our link. And so if you're wandering the internet and you run across this, um, just know you have finally found the right place to take ukulele. Uh, if you are interested in it, treating it as instrumental rather than a, an accompaniment to singing. And that's what I do, and that's what I'm passionate about. And so hopefully you can run over to jollyrogerukulele.com and pick up all the sheet music and resources and all that stuff. The rest of the video is going to be about us playing Three Blind Mice and then Beethoven Sonatina in G, which it's really in F, and... We will be playing that today, so hopefully that's going to be a video you're interested in watching. Also, um, we won't start until, I don't know, about four or five minutes ahead, so if you're just tuning in to watch the, the lessons, uh, you can fast forward for sure. And uh, let's see, it looks like they got this link set up properly, so we should start seeing a huge rush of people coming in to join us, and hopefully that's true today. Um I'm going to make sure the link works. It does. And then I'm going to go back to the video where I'm busy talking. Carol is here. Sound is good. Lynn is here. Hello. Um, I am, I've made some adjustments to the microphone location. So hopefully not completely rattling your speakers at home. I'm trying to get this where it's just a little bit cleaner set up for me so I can see my sheet music. That's been the biggest problem. This is the answer to everything is a pair of rusty old pliers. I don't know. How long, I don't even know where those came from, but boy, are they handy. Uh, let's see. Who else just got in? Diane is making me do, do slides to add to Beethoven's grace notes. Oh, Diane, you're that one. <laughs> I had no idea, Diane. So delighted. I thought, here's what I thought. I thought, Gary's the musician. Diane's being forced to join him. As it turns out, when she said, when I hear Diane's wanting me to add grace notes, here's what I know. Diane's legit, right? That is, that's really awesome, Diane. Diane, I want to come hug you. Uh, yes, indeed, I have taken the grace notes out, and I didn't talk about it yesterday, but I'm glad it has come up today, and I for sure will now talk about it for just a moment. Um, there is a reason I take out grace notes, um, and that's so we can put them back in for those of us who are at that level, but in terms of decorative techniques, um, that don't really work on the ukulele very well. I often just eject them because I know this instrument and because I know that um, I'm wasting my time with them. But Diane, I am delighted. So Gary, don't feel like a victim of uh, poor, poor uh, decision making in Friends. <laughs> um, uh, it is going to make your piece sound way better. It's absolutely going to be a joy to to play the piece once you get all those things put back in. So. Um, uh, Gary, you got a good, you got a good friend there, Diane, uh, Diane, be nice to Gary. What the heck are you doing? Putting in grace notes. Yeah. Are you out of your mind? So exciting. That's very exciting. Uh, yeah. And, um, we'll talk about it when, when we get up there today, remind me to talk about it. Cause I, I do want to talk about those grace notes. It's always one of those decisions that feels a little bit like I'm, simplifying for no apparent reason, but I'm not. I, there really is a real reason why I take them out. Um, hey, Laurel, if this is Tuesday, it must be it must be Belgium. <laughs> um, well, uh, Laurel, the good news is there's a cloud in the sky. I am super excited. It is not 9,000 degrees out there. So uh, Renee's here from Lakewood. Lenny's in from Greeley. Jacqueline, uh, my, my friend Sue, is here trying to get her to join an orchestra. So Sue... Um, why haven't you already joined the orchestra? That's what I want to know. Come on, come on. 70 bucks for a ukulele. The ability to tolerate me teaching, uh, and all of a sudden you're an advanced level musician. I'm delighted you're here, Sue. Uh, the, um, you couldn't be in better hands either. Jackie has been, uh, with us a lot, a lot, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And so, uh, uh, Sue, delighted you're here. Jacqueline, good job bringing in bringing in, in another victim for us to put down in the basement and um, light a candle. Uh, yeah, 
So uh, yeah, we're gonna get you going right, Sue. Um, I promise. I promise. We're, uh, it's this is good stuff. This is the good stuff we're learning here. Laurel, I may or may not be wishing that I had given my piano to my daughter or granddaughter. I, I pianos are such a mixed blessing, right? They are they are the right instrument. They are the best instrument. There's no question. It's the most beautiful instrument. There's no question that. There's no question that the best music in the history of humanity has been written on pianos. <laughs> They're not fun to play. They're just not. They're just, you go and you sit there and you're by yourself for hours at a time. They're just, and you you can't invite, invite 12 people over to play piano. You know, you can't do it. And uh, so I get it. You know, you, you, you've got these pianos. We love them. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, they are just not. They're, they're really hard to talk into being fun and um, you know, I'm pleased that I got where I got in piano. I'm very happy that I learned how to write and I learned how to teach and I learned how to do all this stuff because of the piano. Uh, but in terms of when I get home at night, choices, play the guitar, eh, not fun. Play the piano, uh, really not fun. Play the ukulele, heck yeah, that's <laughs> super fun. So, um, so yeah, I don't give your piano away, maybe, but don't, don't, but if you already did, don't worry about it. I get it. Let's see. Hey, Vicky in from Bozeman. Good to see you. Minutes back in the groove again. That's exciting. Phyllis is in from Ontario, uh, very close to Toronto. I was trying to think, I saw some show last night where the joke was that I'm from Toronto and I was trying to think, of, um, it was a funny joke in the moment and I didn't even think about it. I'm like, oh, that's where Phyllis is from. Uh, Ellen's in from Cuenca, 65 and cloudy. The weather in Cuenca hasn't been quite up to snuff this week. We're uh, um, disappointed in South America, let's be honest. Okay, it's supposed to be perfect every day in Cuenca. Uh, Burke is in. Hi, Burke. Pauline tuning in from the Bay Area. Uh, San, San Francisco's been having a, or the Bay Area in general has been having a sunny, really nice summer this year. There's supposed to be 56 and foggy every day in the summer there. Uh, Kat's here, and she's from Texas, and by goodness, it's going to be hot as heck down there no matter what time of year it is, so glad you keep making it in, Kat. Susan, good to see you here today. Linda in from Sonoma, where it's always perfect, right? And they grow wine, they make wine up there, so. Okay, pianos, are, uh, uh, pianos lack portability, yeah. One time I bought one of those roll-up pianos, and I played it one time, and then it's been sitting in a box ever since. <laughs> I think I gave it away to somebody. Um, Jana? Uh, Jen, yeah, uh, Texarkana may be hot, but Waco is always a whole level, a whole nother level of hot. And so uh, uh, welcome in, Janet, Glenn, and Janet. Glad you're here today. Okay, 105, let's get going. We're playing Three Blind Mice. Um, and and let, let, let's talk about why you would play Three Blind Mice or why you would care about Three Blind Mice. Uh, when you are a newer player, we have to get you through three hurdles, right? Well, 17 hurdles, but three main ones. Um, the first hurdle is how you hold the thing, how you tune the thing, how you uh, think about the thing in terms of how often am I going to practice, you know, one hour every single day. That's what I'm going to do. No, you're not. You're not going to do that. Uh, so how... Um, where do I get sheet music? Are, are these books that you get on Amazon that say ukulele in 15 minutes or th or 365 ukulele songs you can play right now? No, none of that stuff, right? Um, and so there's that first hurdle is getting the right. Yeah, you do need a gig bag. Yeah, you do need a tuner. Yeah, you do need a tuner, another tuner on your phone. So we're getting you through that first hurdle of did you buy the right thing on Amazon? No, you didn't, but we're going to figure out how to deal with that anyway. Uh, second hurdle is um, getting you past the chord problem, right? We're all, when we grab a ukulele, we've seen everybody on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. We got to get you, we got to get you the information to understand what they're doing, which is the chords, and that singing is required when you play that way. So we got to get you through that hurdle. And then the last hurdle we got to get you through is thinking of this as an instrumental piece, as a piece, as, as a something that you can create real music on, not just goof around with. And so that that's the hard hurdle. Now, once you're actually physically sitting in front of your computer looking at me, you probably pass those three hurdles. And that's where Three Blind Mice comes in. We're going to take that. You're no longer, you're no longer worried about this, right? 
the chord in Three Blind Mice is a C chord, right? So you're already beyond that. Uh, with uh, Frere Jaca, Soft Kitty, My Spaghetti Monster, you're starting to get beyond this, this the worry about plucking one note at a time. And so Three Blind Mice is the moment where we bring everything together, put in the last little bit of skills, both thumbing and with the claw. And it's all just a C chord, right? The whole thing is based on a C chord. And once we get all that stuff put together and we get you through today's lesson, after this, you kind of just kick you loose, right? Everything is just more of the same, and that's what's in front of you. So today's sort of graduation from the first three hurdles, right? You got your ukulele. You understand that strumming isn't all that, and now you're ready to put chords and melody together in a meaningful way on a song you could not care less about, right? So the question is, why would you teach songs that nobody likes? Because they because they work, because they work. Once you get this information, then you play whatever you want to play. And frankly, probably, to be honest, the songs you like are kind of dumb too. So uh, let's, let's just play this one, okay? <laughs> three blind mice you have uh when we get to this level i want you to stop and just sort of pat yourself on the back and say i have arrived i am a chord melody player i'm a finger style ukuleleist i'm no longer i can sing if i want but i do not have to and i'm looking at this piece of sheet music going all right do i understand what's on here first of all rocky mountain ukulele orchestra who cares they're they're closed for business until 2021 at least okay not competition at all uh ukuleleorchestra.org don't go there i'm not working on that website right now uh well, it was written in 1609 you can be assured that if you're playing a song that's 400 years old it's probably a pretty good song okay stuck around uh on the far right hand side the or left hand side sorry barrett one time one time no that's not true twice in my life i've been to england and you drive on the other side of the road and as you're driving along you start saying your right turn you're going to have a right turn up here meaning full well you're going to turn left but your brain gets all twisted around because you're used to driving in a, the united states and this is always right but when you are driving in england this is still right but it feels like it's left and so uh so my left and right are i have been a mess ever since then <laughs> um let's see uh, yeah, hey Q, finally finally made it in. And hey Patty, welcome in from Littleton. We finally have a decent day here in Colorado. So that's nice. Far left hand side is the baritone chord. You will notice your baritone chord looks like this, right? That's your F chord. You don't want to play that chord because it'll sound funny. Um, this is uh, my baritone and I keep sitting around here. Okay. And all right, now I want you to do. Let me see if I'm in tune first. <laughs> Let's check and see if I'm in tune on this one. Because we're gonna we're gonna do a cool thing, hopefully. Let's see how close I am to being in tune. Make sure you're in tune real quick. Double check you got GCEA on. Okay, so I'm in tune and I'm baritone. You're in tune on your ukulele. And we need to play together, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to strum a C chord, which looks like your F chord, okay? And you're going to strum your C chord, which looks like your C chord. And uh, we're going to sing Three Blind Mice. Now, I arrange this thing in this way on purpose as a teaching tool. When we generally sing Three Blind Mice, we go, Three Blind Mice, Three Blind Mice, see how they run. See how they run, and then we stick it in fourth gear. They all went after the farmer's wife. That's how we usually do it. I don't want you to do that. I want you to slow down. I purposely, purposely, purposely put this piece of sheet music to get you to slow down and be thinking about it as a instrumental experience. Okay, so I'm going to sing. We know that's not good. You're going to play a C chord. I'm going to back you up with a lower voicing on the baritone, okay? Holding my C chord, and let's see how we sound, okay? Uh, some of you are gonna strum, some of you are gonna pluck, some of you are gonna double strum, whatever you wanna do. Some of you may do your, right? Whatever, find a cool strum. One, two, three, four. Three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run. See how they run. They all went after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. 
Have you ever seen such a sight in your life as three blind mice? Two, three. Don't let up on your cord until you have finished letting it ring out. Okay. So um, lots of things we've learned so far. We know you guys know how to make your C chord. You know how to strum in many different ways. If you're brand new, just thumb down is perfectly fine. Notice when I'm strumming on a ukulele, I'm usually strumming about where the neck and the body meet up here, not necessarily over the hole. If I'm finger picking, I have to be down here over the hole because the fretboard gets in the way if you're trying to finger pick up here. But when I'm really playing um, uh, strumming, I'm going to be strumming up here. It just sounds prettiest. And take a minute to notice that. Take your take your um, strum here, and then go down here and hear the difference. A lot tinnier sounding to it, and just a lot more. Uh, there's reasons why you would strum down there. There absolutely are, but not very often. Okay, so so if you're down here, sounds more like an old AM radio or something, and uh, up here sounds more like oh ukulele. So, so by playing in different spots along this journey, you can get different quality of tone. Um, we played together, hopefully. I played a C chord, you played a C chord. They both sounded very different, but we sounded good together, hopefully. I sang, as you could tell, that's never a good thing. One of the things I noticed, even though I'm playing on a lower voiced instrument, my voice still has to get to that C, that the, you know, the high C. It doesn't go there. It is, it's not a voice that's going to be willing to get to the upper C. So when we do, all went after the farmer's wife, I just can't hit those notes and so it doesn't matter how low my instrument is my voice is not going to do that that's a problem a lot of us get into when we go to the strum along for ukuleles is that the voice you know the singers who know what they're doing and they're really good at it and they can get to those higher notes especially females who have a little bit higher register they can really nail these these uh songs that we like to play at the strum along whereas meanwhile us men are like blah, 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 wishing that we weren't doing that at all and so just know you do not have to sing anymore if you don't want to. But if you want to, you absolutely can continue doing that. That's what strumming is. I will mention very quickly, because I've never brought it up in these classes before, when we get to picking individual melody notes, it's really hard to sing. Three blind mice, three blind mice. It works on a slow song where the melody is very simple. The more complex it gets, it gets harder and harder and harder. So if you're going to sing, you are not going to be playing tough uke or ukulele line. You're going to be doing the chords. And there's nothing, again, nothing wrong with that. That's a way of playing the ukulele. Just know that generally speaking, when you are doing melody, it should be coming out of your face or your ukulele, but it doesn't really work when it's coming out of both, okay? That's why you get a band. Let somebody else play the melody, you sing. Uh, their job is now to keep up with you, and it's all uh, a good good ton of fun. All right, that's so far we've covered top of the paper. We've covered the chord that you're playing, okay? And again, make sure ring finger on three. It's beautiful chord, you know, just beautiful. You can strum it, three blind mice. You can pluck it, three blind mice. You can arpeggiate it, three blind mice. Okay, so all of those things are, are available to you as, a, as an instrumentalist. And if you happen to be showing ukulele to somebody else, you want to share all of those things with them. You do want to teach them, you know, how to hold a C chord, how to hold the ukulele properly, how to uh, strum, pluck, and arpeggiate okay i don't know if that's a verb but it is now um and uh all of those things are tools that you use as a newer player to get where you're sounding really nice now let's move on to the next learning experience last night in global institute we talked about reading standard notation and reading the sheet note uh the the the, the dots reading those dots there on the melody line of this one i think i might have updated your your uh I gotta double check if I gave you guys the more updated it's three blind mice. I didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so uh, on that melody line, those are your actual notes that would you would play on every single instrument. If you had a trumpet, you could play those notes. If you had a piano, you can play those notes. If you have a violin, you can play those notes. If you have a theremin, theoretically, you could play those notes. Um, and let's run through them quickly. Quarter note equals 
one, right? So that means mice must be worth two because we're playing in four, four. So the one with the hole is worth two beats. Three blind mice beat. Three blind mice beat. Okay. And then you got in measure three, you got some eighth notes. Remember from last night? See how they run beat. See how they run they. Okay. So that's how we count that. Those eighth notes have to be counted as, uh, in this case, two and. Uh, see how they run would be counted as one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four, and then moving on. So again, be, be mindful that you now know how to do that. This is a skill that you have, and you're going to be working on trying to improve um, just understanding what that notes, those notes are up there for. Um, those of you guys who've had a little bit of background know it goes E, e note, D note, C note, E note, D note, C note. G note, F, F, E, G, F, F, E. And then the question always comes up, should I know how to read that? You do not have to know how. You do not have to know that information. If, as long as you have tablature, as long as you get the sheet music from me, you will never have to know that stuff. But it is important that you know that, that those notes, those dots are meaningful and have a place in your musical life. Um, and if you want to learn them, it's certainly a smart idea. But if you don't want to learn them, that's perfectly fine, too. So all of that is um, coming out of last night's discussion about um, standard notation. Okay, so that's sitting up there. Right under that is the stuff we really care about, and that's one note at a time, the melody line, the ukulele line in this case. You're going to play whichever string it tells you to do and whatever fret it tells you to do. So let's give that a try. We're going to play three blind mice top to bottom. You're going to play with me. If you are learning how to play melody, your goal is to play with me um, those notes. And when you blow it, and we always blow it, right? I'll probably blow it. I've played this song 10,000 times. I have a good chance I'll make a mistake. Uh, your job is to for, pretend it never happened. There are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. You just played the jazz version uh, for that moment, and you got to get back in, right? So if you make a mistake, you don't want to drop out and just give up, right? Just try and jump down a measure or two and jump back in and see how you do, okay? So let's give it a try from the very top. First note's going to be a zero on the second string, and um, I'm going to play the whole thing with my thumb. If you're working on your claw, you might want to try playing the whole thing with your index, middle, uh, and ring. Okay, from the top, one, two, three, four. Zero, two, zero, zero, two, zero. Three, one, one, zero. Three, one, one, zero. Three, 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 two, oh, two, three, three, three. ukulele finish completely ringing out before you take uh, anything off your left hand in this case it's an open note so you're already off but always let your ukulele finish its job it's going to sound much nicer by the way red sent me a note and said gary stop staring at the uh, staring at yourself on the laptop start staring at the camera so today in my head the whole time i think stare at the camera stare at the camera all right <laughs> i look so charming in this in this uh, laptop i think that i should just that i should listen to that guy he seems to know what he's doing um all right, individual notes are a big deal, okay? Now you don't have to sing anymore if you don't like singing. Let's do it one more time. Um, yeah, one more time. One, two, a little, little faster. How about that? One, two, three, four. Zero, two, zero. Zero, two, zero. Three, one, one, oh. Three, one, one, oh. Three, 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 two, oh, two. Uh, 
always, I think always is correct, slow down just a little bit as I'm coming into the hangar, right? As I'm getting to the very end of the song, I just, it's just the nature of music. You slow it down just a little bit so your audience can feel like, yes, it is time for me to go into wild applause over him playing Three Blind Mice. So, and in almost every song you're ever going to play, you're going to slow down just a little bit at the, at the ending there. It's just a convention in music. Um, now, We've now learned how to play from chords, and we've now learned how to play from melody, and we've now learned how to play with a baritone player while we play the chords. So now I want to do work in another way of playing, which is duet playing. And this you can take, especially if you're working with other people uh, in a small group or a large group or a gigantic group. Uh, you can give some people the melody and some people the chords, and then everybody plays their part, and it's wonderful. Hardest part of playing duets is not playing the melody. That part is, it is what it is. The hardest part about playing a duet is as a chord player, you know in your head there's got to be four strums in every measure. Strum, 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 strum. And that never changes through the whole entire song until measure 12 when for some reason it just sounds better to do three. Mice, blanc, blanc. Okay, so here's your challenge. I'm going to play the melody. I'm going to do exactly what I just did. Okay, you're going to play the chords. One chord. Okay, beautiful. I guess you could do this one if you're trying to be fancy. You could do this one if you're trying to be ridiculously fancy. Um, four strums per measure. Do not pay attention to what's going on in the melody. Just keep up with me. Okay, I'm going to set the pace. You're going to strum every every beat in the song. The reason I don't like to pause and talk about this, a lot of times I'll get people in uh, who've been to a few strum alongs and like, gosh, I just can't seem to sing and strum at the same time. It's because you're trying to sing and strum at the same time. What you need to do is strum, 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 and then fill it in with singing. Okay, so get your strumming to be very consistent with the beat. If you're in four, four time, it's four times. If it's if you're in three, four times, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So just get your strumming steady and then your voice will magically know where it's supposed to be. That's what's kind of cool. Now, I can't hear you. Okay, so I'm assuming you're going to be at a certain pacing and that we're going to stick to that pacing. I'm going to try to play it as consistent pacing to help you out, but it should be the other way around. Normally, as the melody player, I am listening to the percussionist or to the, the rhythm guitarist, which is your job right now, and then I play my melody accordingly to whatever pace you're setting. But in this case, because I can't hear you, um, I, I can only sense you through the aura of the universe. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to set the pace. We're going to hope that it sticks, stays the same all the way through, and uh, you're going to play along with me. Okay? So let's get ready to go. From the top, you strum, I'll play uh, the melody. One, two, three, four. O, two, O, re, three blind mice strum. See how they run, strum. See how they run, stay. All went after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life? As three strum, blind strum, mice strum, strum. Don't let off this until the ukulele is done doing its thing. We'll do it one more time. Okay, a little bit faster. One, two, right? We're going to do it a little bit faster. See if I can, I'm going to try to max out my speed on three of my mice. You're going to keep that beat steady. You have strum every single beat. Okay, don't pay any attention to what I, what's going on in the melody. One, two, three, four. Three blind mice strum. Three blind mice strum. See how they run, strum. Three how they run. They all went after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life? As three strum, blind strum, mice strum, strum. Okay. 
what I find when I'm teaching students, um, they get where you, you're getting probably you already know, hey, I'm able to play that melody. I'm not having a problem with that. But I, but I find when we do this duet, when we get to three blind mice and it's time to do the duet, I have a hard time getting the strummers to stay on point. One, two, three, four, and to play loud enough where the melody players can hear it and be confident that their notes are coming in exactly on the, where the beat is. And so if you have a, a group and you're thinking, hey, I might teach them some of this stuff, uh, don't think that because they're on on C chord four beats that that's going to be the easy thing for them because really it turns out it's the opposite of that that turns out to be surprisingly hard the tendency is to play strum 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 nothing strum 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 nothing strum something's with some strum it's nothing and so they tend to people we tend to want to end up strumming along with the pace of the music and that's the wrong way to do it strumming is a percussion activity one two three four okay i think i beat that into the ground finally here we go this is the important stuff. This is the good stuff. This is what's going to keep you coming back for more for the rest of your life. You can learn both of those ways to play and you'll still end up quitting. But if you learn this, the third method or fourth or whatever method we're on, tough you, this is what's going to keep you. It's like a crossword puzzle. Every single day, the crossword puzzle shows up. Every single day, you're going to do it, even though you've done 4,000 of them in your life, even though some of the how many birds are there right how many birds that you've never heard of are there you know you're still going to do the crossword puzzle even though you know that's a dumb thing or rappers that's what they're lately has been putting in crossword puzzles these are people that i don't know nobody knows right google right it's tough you the same thing every single day a new tough you is arriving or you got an opportunity to work on something else tough you wise and you and it, it's a new challenge every single time you see it so you've got a three blind mice most of you guys are playing beethoven right this doesn't seem like there's still going to be challenges here and uh, it's kind of fun to see how you're doing on it okay so first note is zero 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 so Make sure your thumb is physically resting on the string you're not going to play. You're not going to play the first string, so your thumb's hanging out like a hammock. Boom. Like that. Let's see. Oh, Linda showed up today. Hey, Linda and Vi uh, Valerie's here. Made it silly doctor. Didn't understand. <laughs> These doctors, honest to goodness. I actually have a couple doctors as private students, and they are honestly doctors think differently all right so they don't understand beethoven is, is essential okay first note zero 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 three and then put your where your melody was is the two and then you're going to strum down to it zero two blind and then my zero zero mice then you don't do anything right because it's a half note next one three blind Mines. Okay, let's go into major three. We're going to put a three on there. And again, making sure we're rest stroking on this first string. C, go to the ones. How they run. Again. C, how they run. And then you're going to go to they, zero, zero, three. They. Now we're going to measure five. Okay, in this beautiful real C chord. All went change to the two half take it off Der, put it back on the got your three here far bunny hop to the other three and make sure we rest stroke now mers wife she okay now we're going to the c again cut off there go to the two tails all zeros with a Bunny hop, ding, knife, have you, C chord, ever seen such a sight in your life as three, zero, two, blind mice. Okay, so that's what we're working on here. Let's play together. Again, thumb down on everything, just all the way through. From the top, one, two, three, four.
that's it. So that's sort of the bridge to nowhere, not to nowhere. That's the bridge you can't come back over. What's that? What are those called? Um, so it's a one-way bridge to awesomeness. Okay. Once that makes sense to you, hey, I'm just playing the chord down until my until whatever note I happen to be holding, and I put the melody jumps out of my ukulele magically because it's the last string I hit. Um, and I've also now included the C chord in under every single note in the melody. And now I'm playing chord and melody at the same time. I don't have to sing. I don't have to help out this song. It's going to take care of itself. Absolutely beautiful way of playing. It is how all top level musicians play this is the basic stuff it's really we make it a little fancier we change the chords once in a while and we speed up and then and it's but it's all the same stuff it's just putting chords and melody together simultaneously and doing some fancy things with our right hand and the whole that's it right that's there's as you guys have been around a while we'll agree we're just doing more and more and more of this stuff how many times is zero 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 or zero zero three shown up right that one right there that's shown up a million times over the last few months that we've been playing together here it is, Three Blind Mice, lesson number four. So um, so final thoughts on Three Blind Mice. If you are a next level player, you should be thinking about okay, you'd be thinking about clawing your way through it. If you're even uh, beyond that, you're thinking about adding in your uh, adding in your decorations. in those notes in between the notes right and you just have to be holding the chord and whatever string you pluck will sound fine but you're adding in notes in between those notes and then finally those of you who are in global uh institute a few months back we said all right three blind mice is a very sad song we're playing it three blind mice three blind mice right that's how we play it right what if you put it in a sad key three blind Mice. Oh. Okay, then you then you're becoming a musician. This is the basic idea. We're gonna bring weird chords. We're gonna add some chords. We're gonna change the from a major to a minor. We're gonna take those words which make no sense whatsoever. Three blind mice. We're gonna turn it into uh, I don't know one perfectly vivid vivid sing 2020 eyesight shark and do this to do uh, an entirely terrifying version of baby shark uh, but but these are starting points right all everything that's here is designed to be built on okay and um we have now taken those of you who are newer from i i own a ukulele to i'm playing chord melody Okay? And everything going forward is going to be more and more and more of the same. And you're going to end up hopefully being super proud of what you do. Two things that I always tell people at this point in their ukulele career. There's only two things you have to do to become an advanced musician. One is practice. You can just show up here every day and you're practicing. So th that's covered. And two is show up. Okay, that means trying, that means playing with other people, that means playing uh, with me, that means sending me a, a note once in a while, hey, Gary, let's do a Zoom lesson and we'll, we'll, we'll get together and, and we'll, we'll check out that you're not doing something crazy. But showing up, I meet people all of the time, not so much in ukulele because this wasn't a thing forever, but I meet guitar players all the time. Yeah, I bought a guitar 20 years ago. I played it really a lot until I learned Joni Mitchell's whatever. And then that guitar ended up underneath the bed for 20 years. It happens all of the time. And it's because they stopped showing up, right? They, they still love playing music. They just stopped showing up. And so find a way to show up. This is one of the ways you show up is showing up to these lessons. These lessons are free. Show up, right? <laughs> okay. Um, three blind mice. That's it. Uh, that's uh, next uh, very quickly. Tomorrow we'll be looking uh, at strumming in the key of C. So you will want to pu pull up that piece of paper. It's got the thing that matters on there. We start with kookaburra. Uh, well, we actually start with soft kitty. Make sure you, uh, that you're changing chords properly. Then we go to kookaburra because it's got the little bit easier G7. And then if we have time, we'll also talk about, for sure, uh, by Friday we'll do it. But uh, but if tomorrow we may have a little bit of time to talk about waltzing Matilda. So, on, so that by Friday you will know, hey, I'm doing waltzing Matilda top to bottom. It's going to be great. And um, so there we go. Okay, uh, let's see. Alan made it in today. Sweating yard work. Yeah, do yard work out there. Ugh. 
uh, uh, let's see, Q, can, can you go over the strum again? Which strings to play and not play? Um, so when we are strumming, Q's question is a bit obscure, right? When we're strumming, we're almost always on ukulele playing all the strings, right? Three, by my three, by my six. What separates ukulele and guitar? Ukulele is so much more fun because we almost always hit all four strings. But when you are pluck when you are plucking through with your thumb doing chord melody you're only going to hit the notes that it tells you to so example in measure one it says zero 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 you're playing zero 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 and your thumb is resting on the string you're not going to play then it's zero two so you hold the two zero two and your thumb is resting there okay so every single moment in the song it tells you exactly which strings to hit and that's the beauty of tablature strum 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 so in other words the, the question Q is asking is, doesn't have one answer. If you're just strumming, you're probably hitting all four strings, holding the chord and having a great time. If you're playing chord melody, you're only going to hit those strings going down until you hit the melody note, and then, then you have to stop because you don't want any sounds above the melody note. If it's strum and you hit this higher note, then all of a sudden you've messed up the melody. Three, blind mice okay that won't sound right okay so we have to stop strumming down the minute our finger uh, the, the str string we hit has the melody note on it okay so a lot of stuff in this one piece of music if you're new and you're like oh god i'm kind of confused i think that three boy mice is supposedly important um just play it just play it today try the different different lines go through sing and strum it go through pluck one note at a time and then go through and and, and, and dig into that tough axe just a little bit and know that you don't have to have a perfect today you don't have to have a perfect ever <laughs> um but what you do want to do is get where you whether you can do it or not whether you can physically make this stuff happen is less important than you have a knowledge of what you're supposed to do okay and that is you know i want to make sure that you, at least you have the right thought in your head and then we got to get that thought through your fingers and that can be that's a lifelong experience okay uh hopefully that answered your question q just hanging on <laughs> Just hanging on your every word. Diane does not hang on my every word. Diane is one of my favorite people in all of life. And one thing I know is she doesn't hangs on zero of my words. All right, <laughs> Diane. All right, Beethoven. Let's get at it. Let me pull mine up. Switch keys here. Beethoven Sonatina Part 2. Just so you guys know, the, the sheet music is identical from yesterday and today. Part 2, I just added in the ending of the first part of the sonata. I don't know why I didn't just give that to you yesterday. I'm, um, I was going to feed you like baby birds, you know, give you a little bit of time, but that was stupid. So the sonatina is set up in two separate movements. There's the first movement, which you now have the entire first movement, and then the second movement, which I hopefully I'll give you tomorrow or I'll at least give you half of it tomorrow. Um, and it, it's in a different time signature and the whole thing. So it's really like two separate songs that they put together. And then musical musical people say, yeah, those go together. They are, they're the recapitulation and the uh, exposition. And they have all these fancy words for it. They're two completely separate songs. They have so little <laughs> resemblance between one another that they're two completely separate songs. But because Beethoven had them sitting together, we treat them as they go together. And so we're, so you would now have page one of uh, his sonatina, every piece of it, okay? We spent a long time yesterday on the first eight measures, and I want to just play through that real quick, and then I want to dive in uh, and make sure the rest of the song is sounding good, okay? So again, if you are a chord person, you don't have much to do here. You, if you get together with some people and they say, hey, let's play that Beethoven piece, uh, nobody would say it. Maybe somebody would say that. Of course, you, yeah, you might have a friend who likes that, okay? You would play, somebody play chords and you'd play melody and then you'd have a great time. They've got an easy job of it. Strum, 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 F, 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 C, seven, two, three, four. But the funny part about it is that's the basis of this song. If you listen to that, that doesn't sound like Beethoven, right? F, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, seven, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, B flat, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, seven, two, F. That's what you're playing. 
if you are a ukulele player and you're coming out of that ukulele tradition where we sing and strum everything, you play that, you're not going to think Beethoven, right? So we got to add some stuff to that. But if you get together with a friend and you're like, I'll play melody, you play chords, they got, they, they're fine, okay? They got that B flat sitting there and they're like, oh, I don't like B flat, okay? But outside of that, pretty, pretty, pretty basic chord pattern, okay? Melody, let's run through the melody, make sure we know a kind of how it goes, and then we'll talk about the tough acts real quick. So from the top, I'm going to count in four. Remember, the first movement is pianissimo. So try to try to play it a little bit quieter than you might have. I will probably be playing it at false volume because my sound comes out of here and into this little microphone that you, is right off the side of the com computer. And it goes in there, and then it goes to your house. And if you can't hear it, you turn it up. So everything at your house is always mezzo forte. Okay? All right. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to try and play it a little pianissimo. One, two, three. Oh, wait, we decided yesterday to play it slower. I'm going to slow it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, three, oh, one, eight, three, three, oh, oh, one, one, oh, three, oh, one, three, three, five, three, oh, one, three. back through play it one more time because i'm going to guess a couple of you probably didn't get all the notes in okay i'm sensing in the universe i'm sensing in the universe that alan missed a couple of those notes okay let's give him a second chance okay let's back up alan <laughs> i just picked him easily he's the first boy at the bottom i'm like don't pick on diane you always pick on diane don't pick on q you don't even know q pick on alan he's okay all right <laughs> one two three four one, three, one, three, oh, one, eight, three, three, oh, oh, one, one, oh, three, oh, one, three, three, five, three, oh, one, three, one, three, oh, three, three, one, three, oh, one five one five five three five seven eight three five one oh three one three three oh one two three isn't that beautiful that's a beautiful melody holy moses okay that's the melody we're going for now just take I'm pulling out of the last lesson Three blind mice. We're now just going to add the chord in up above it as we strum down until we hit the melody note. And then in this case, because it's a kind of a challenging song, we're going to uh, have not a chord on every single thing that will wear us out, right? We're going to hit the chord, then we're going to play a little bit of melody, then we're going to hit another chord and play a little bit of melody, and it's going to be true chord melody thing. Um, and by the way, Beethoven basically wrote this out as pure finger style. <laughs> he didn't. He did uh, apparently, allegedly, own, uh, held a guitar at one point and said it was a an orchestra in your lap. That's the uh, our, uh, uh, thing that goes around in guitar circles, and it's probably not true, but it's, it's delightful to think about, right? Um, and so Beethoven and he used this hand for his chords and this hand for his melody. And uh, and then he did a lot of this with his chords. You guys have already done a lot of this with your chords. And so and then you end up with fingerstyle ukulele. So he met, he knew it was coming. He knew and deep down so in his soul. He was like, yeah, we got Napoleon to deal with. After that, we got ukulele coming. And I'm going to write some stuff for that. All right. From the top, super slow. One, two, three, four. Strum. Strum one three oh strum eight three strum oh oh one strum strum 
301 strum 35 strum 013 strum 303 strum 13 oh yay b flat 515 b flat 357 f Three, five, one, strum, three, one, three, strum, oh, strum. Okay, that's going to be beautiful when you get it up to speed and when it's starting to come together a little bit. Uh, I'm playing it a tiny bit better than yesterday because I'm starting to figure out what not to do. And um, it's starting to sound like the song, which is so exciting. I'd like to play it one more time, then we're going to dig into the rest. Okay, from the top. And by the way, if you are doing this, you're probably doing something really, really right. Okay. In fact, I'll play it that way this time. I'll just play the claw. One, two, three, four. One, three, oh, strum. Eight, three, strum. Oh, oh, one, strum, strum. I think yesterday I took off the, the B flat in the middle of six. It's shown back up here because I pulled it off of the master. And I think I think we'll be able to play it. Um, you you can decide if that's it's if you if you want to play it. And as you know, anytime you get to a chord, you're like, I don't know what the heck is going on there. Don't play the whole chord, just play the whatever note is on the very top of that on your sheet music. So you get to major six, you got a B flat. You're like, I hate B flat. I'm not playing a B flat. Just play that one on the first string. You'll be fine. Same thing midway through major six. You got five, six, five, seven. Well, that's an F shape on five. Can't get it in there quickly enough. Just play the five that five on the first string and it'll be fine so don't let yourself get sad over chords that you're not going to be able to get to just play the top note and move on yeah don't 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 lose sleep on it okay um beethoven had a great big instrument in two hands to get all this done you've got to do it all <laughs> with with this right with this this it doesn't that's ridiculous all right so that's your your first section there uh then we move on to the second section in the song uh that one i would consider the main thing usually there's not a lot of on sonatas or see a lot of times there'll be an intro of some sort exposition is the fancy word they use call it um there'll be an intro and then there's the main theme and that's what that's going to be here and then we do this other little section and then it'll go back to the main theme so you guys found it yesterday we're going to um, have eight measures here in the middle that are different than the first then we'll go back to the main theme recapitulation and then we'll have an outro at the end which is just you know i don't know it's it's not really that related to the main theme okay so we're going to play basically in modern terms we're playing verse verse a verse b verse a and then outro mm -hmm. Okay, um, I want to go for measure nine. I want you to play it in any method that makes sense to you right now. So if you are playing the melody, um, we're going to go try to go as slow as possible. Three, oh, 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 one, oh, three, oh, three, one, ten, eight, seven, five, three, one. Okay, that's going to be super challenging in and of itself. Those of you guys who are like, I love Beethoven. I really, really, really want to make this song want something that I can do. This is be a showpiece. This is a, a showstopper when somebody says, hey, play me something on ukulele. And you play the Beethoven sonatina. <laughs> you get put into a, an elite group of people that they're not going to mess with. Okay. Speaking of elite groups of people we don't mess with, uh, Gary walked in today and he says, Diane's making me put in grace notes. And you should know, especially especially if you go listen to the piano piece, there are grace notes in there. And on a piano, to do a grace note, you go, but um, but um, you can hardly see it. It's either 
ring to middle or middle to index. Sometimes it's index to middle, right? But um, but um, okay. And on ukulele, it would sound like. Um, I take those out, okay? Because the truth is, they'd sound ridiculous on a ukulele unless you hit them dead on perfect. And the chances of you hitting them dead on perfect on something like this is not high. Um, but by putting those grace notes in, if you're like, yep, I'm definitely going to put those back in, um, you can, again, take yourself to that next level, right? So uh, if you if you want, uh, I take them off because it just clogs up the whole thing, and I'm not going to do them anyway. Um, I just don't think they sound that great on ukulele. But I do think if you want to put them in, uh, and, and go listen to it. It doesn't matter what the prior note is. Let's say um, yeah, on major one, you got dum, 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 dum. That's your first thing, okay? So, uh, but if you've got your first notes here, you're going to add on your pinky in front of that note to get that grace note in there. So it would be, end up being. Okay, so that's why it's a super high-level challenging thing, and I don't really talk to people about it. I, frankly, I never talk to anybody about it um, because by the time you're ready to do that, you don't need any help to, to know how to do that. You just know you have to start practicing that one little move. And so there are some grace notes in the, in the piece. I go ahead and take them out. Those of you guys who want to go ahead and put them back in, good luck. Send me your video. I would be delighted to, <laughs> to watch you tackle that. Um, Alan says, I have to go switch my... And typically, I do be plus exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alan will be back. He's getting his other ukulele. All right. From measure nine, play whatever you can, and we're going to go crazy slow. One, two, three, four. Strum, oh, three, oh. Strum, one, ten, eight, seven. Five, three, one, strum, oh, one, add your three, strum, one, oh, one, B flat, three, twelve, ten, eight, seven, five, three, B flat, ten, eight, seven, five, three, one F chord, strum, eight, seven, five, three, one, O, oh, strum, O, oh, two, strum, one, three, O, oh, B flat, O, oh, one, strum, one, three, O, oh, F, okay, and back to the main idea, strum, one, Strum eight three strum o oh, o oh, one strum strum three o oh, one strum three five strum o oh, one three f three o oh, three strum one three o oh, b flat. One, five, strum, three, five, seven, strum, three, five, one, strum, three, one, three, strum, oh, strum. At the end of that notion right there, measure 24, you are jumping back, playing measure nine again. Okay, so don't, on Friday, we will definitely make that jump to go back and play measure nine. Okay, so just know that section is played through twice. Okay, and Beethoven, just like I do, just put in a repeat to make it longer. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just like Beethoven. All right, finally, measure 25 to the end. That's the outro, or I think they have some fancy word music for it. But, the, um, but this is actually going to give you a tiny bit of a challenge as a high GU player. You're going to be hitting the C chord over and over, zero and zero, zero, or sometimes an F chord, zero, two and zero. But you want to make sure 
because you're hitting this top note, and if you have a high G ukulele, this is higher than the, than this note pitch wise. You don't want to over hit that note because this is the melody note. So we're putting it in there as decoration, but make sure you're really emphasizing your C string there. Okay, instead of that's not right. You want to have hitting your C chord C note is the important thing. Um, this would be an, an excellent place to be thinking about possibly going to um, claw. Okay, so that's how we're going to play that. Um, you might do thumb, okay? Both of those would be perfectly legitimate choices. You're only going to play this section one time through when we do our final presentation. So go through, play it with the plucks, and then go through and play it with your thumb and find out which is going to go better for you. This section is quite a bit easier than the other two sections. Okay, so let's give it a try from measure 20, what is it, 25? <laughs> now this huge window here, and then I have my sheet music in front of the window, and that's not smart. Okay, <laughs> here we go. From 25, super slow. One, two, three, four. Strum three, one, three. Strum three, one, three. Strum one, oh, one. Strum one, oh, one. Strum, oh, three, oh. Strum. Strum one oh one strum one oh one strum three one three strum three one three strum one oh one strum oh one oh strum oh three oh strum three one three strum 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 oh strum oh strum okay on piano that's actually kind of a cool little moment it's much much easier than the other section i think he was probably just putting something on the end to get it over with um, but the other two so what you've got are really four sections in the song intro um set b section goes back to the intro and then wraps up with this uh, outro. Um, again, if you just worked on these two pages for a long time and really got them smooth and beautiful, you'd have something pretty neat. So again, the Sonatina is, is two separate songs that, that Beethoven tapped together. Um, and this is the complete first part of that Sonatina. Tomorrow or the uh, over the next two days, I'll get you the second section. Um, and uh, it's it's in a different time signature and all that stuff, so it'll be a little bit it'll be more fun, more more fun with Beethoven. Okay, um, I think that's what I want to talk about today. Um, hopefully, I said something that made sense. And uh, so to, tonight, just spend as much time as you can on Beethoven. Uh, and remember, remember, if you were in Global Institute last night, and I'm serious about this, I'm so serious. Oh, my hair, right? You were playing an arpeggio into this machine each pick do it every single day you sit down to do your practice grab whatever arpeggio you're working on play through it and then go back and hit record and then play through it again and try to pretend this isn't happening okay then when you get done you hit stop you put save and then don't worry about what actually ended up on tape okay so you're in that process this week of trying to put together your first song right your first recording your uh, your the first song in your ep for ukulele uh but we i want you to be i want you to be marking your place in time with a a recording of where you're at so that six months from now you can go listen to that and be like man i was terrible back then um and you'll be awesome six even more awesome than you are now six months from now all right that's enough for today um yeah that's it so go off and beethovenize let's see what else did we have here? Uh, so have a wonderful day um, laurel says it's a beautiful song i agree laurel we are we're killing it renee beautiful thank you for being here minette uh you're welcome minette absolutely beautiful thank you yeah it's when we're done with this on friday we're gonna be like yeah, it's going to be really, 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 really delightful to have a, a legit piece of Beethoven. So um, good job. 
Uh, one of you please in a ringer. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I, can't. I, I I'm going to go ahead and give Beethoven most of the credit on this one. Yeah, it turns out um, he knows a little bit about writing music. So in terms of the overall beauty, let's 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 tip our hat to the to the to the old guy. All right. <laughs> Elizabeth, thanks for my Ludwig. I'm watching to see what I miss when I'm looking at the music. You pack a lot in that and mice lesson. Always learns. that mice lesson. I adore three blind mice. <laughs> I adore it. Can you tell? I'm just like, this is song is the greatest song ever written. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Patty, have a wonderful day. Phyllis, it's good to see you. Um, have a wonderful evening as well. Sandy, um, thanks for being here. Peace. Uh, Lanny, I'll see you soon. Uh, Jacqueline, thanks so much. Uh, applause for <laughs> Sue. Sue, keep the bar low and you will always be entertained by me, right? Keep the bar low, low, very low. Like if you can keep it right about here, I'm going to come in right there all of the time. So glad to have you, Sue. Uh, keep coming back, I think. If you don't, uh, but if you keep coming back, you'll end up a great ukulele player. And that may or may not be what you want to do. Uh, Diane, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for the mask, Diane. I've been wearing it. I love it. Uh, and Lynn, uh, you have a wonderful evening too. All right, guys, I'm going to pull the plug. You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, stay out of the, uh, stay away from every human being, um, and probably including your family. Uh, it's brutal out there. Uh, take care of yourselves, be good and be kind to one another. And I will see all of you, uh, tomorrow. Have a great night. Thanks, Jana.